Welcome to Billbox 3.1. In this video, we will provide a workspace overview for the 3D world. A world node is a 2D or 3D environment that consists of a series of scenes, which collectively represent a single level in your game. From the mind map, double click the 3D world to enter the scene editor. A scene is a 3D or 2D environment within a world. The scene editor allows you to add and edit individual scenes that make up your game world. By default, every scene includes a camera, a source of light, and a set of start and end points of the current scene. To select any of these objects, all you have to do is simply left click them. Use the left mouse button to select any of these objects in your scene. To deselect an object, simply click on an empty space in the scene. Let's look at how to navigate in the scene editor. To move or pan the view around, hold down your spacebar, then left click and drag in any direction. To rotate the view, hold down your spacebar and then right click and drag in any direction as well. To zoom in, simply scroll up with your mouse wheel, then scroll down to zoom out. You can also use controller command plus or minus on your keyboard to zoom in and out as well. You can also use the fly navigation. To do so, simply hold down your right mouse button, then drag to point your view in any direction. With your right mouse button pressed, you can then use your mouse to aim your view in any direction of the scene, then use WASD to move around. W will move the view forward, A to the left, S will move the view back, and D will move to the right. You can also use Q to move up and E to move down as well. To reset and return to the default view, go to the menu bar at the top, then click View, then click Reset View. If you would like to center the view onto an object, select the object, then press F on your keyboard. Next, let's take a look at how you can duplicate objects. One way is to use WASD to duplicate objects in different directions. To do so, press W to duplicate up, S to duplicate down, A to duplicate left, and D to duplicate to the right. You can also use Command or Control C and Command or Control V to copy and paste an object as well. If you would rather cut and paste your object, then use Control or Command X followed by Control or Command V. Now that we know how to interact with objects as well as navigate in our scene, let's take a closer look at some of the objects that are currently in our scene. The camera is the perspective that the players will see in the game. To see your game through the camera, click the camera icon in the toolbar on the far right hand side. From here, you can use the same navigation controls to change the view of your camera as well. To go back to the editor view, simply click the camera icon once more. The light sun is a global light source that emits light in a specified direction. The arrow on the light sun will tell us exactly which direction our light is being emitted and can be rotated to change the light direction. Moving or repositioning the light sun does not affect how the light gets projected. The start and end points are what determine the length of a scene. The start point is the beginning of the scene, whereas the end point is the very end of the scene. When the end point of a scene has been reached, the start point of the next scene will be shown. Let's now look at the different tools in our toolbar at the top. We'll walk through each of the tools that you can access here. We'll start with the Select tool. This feature allows you to select multiple objects in the scene editor. To activate, just click the tool button and draw a bounding box over the objects on the grid that you want to select. The Move tool allows you to change the position of the selected objects in the scene. To enable the Move tool, click the icon or press 1 on your keyboard. Then click and drag one of the three handles to move the object into a single axis direction. You can also click and drag the center square to move in all directions. Use the Rotate tool to rotate the selected object around a 3D axis. You can simply activate the Rotate tool by clicking its icon or pressing 2 on your keyboard. Then drag one of the handles to rotate the object into an axis direction. You can also click and drag the outer handle to rotate the object according to the scene view. The Scale tool will allow you to reduce or increase the size of the selected object in proportional dimensions. Click the icon or press 3 on your keyboard to enable the Scale tool, then simply click and drag a handle to change the size of the object into an axis direction. You can also change the size of the object in all directions at once by clicking and dragging the center of the tool. The axis handles of the Move, Rotate, and Scale tools correspond to the following attributes in the Options panel. The green handle represents the y-axis, which is the vertical up and down direction. The red handle represents the x-axis, which is the horizontal or left or right direction. And the blue handle represents the z-axis, which is the depth forward and back direction. Lastly, we have the multi-tool. 
This tool allows you to position, rotate, and scale the selected object all at the same time. Click its icon or press 4 on your keyboard to activate the multi-tool. Using this tool, you can use the same click and drag motion to move an asset in all directions, or drag the sides and corners to change the size of your asset. You will notice that there are different symbols on each side of the tool. Clicking and dragging the symbol on the right, either up or down, will rotate the asset along the x-axis. The symbol at the top will rotate the asset along the z-axis when dragged from side to side. Dragging the symbol at the bottom will rotate the asset along the y-axis, and the symbol on the left will move the asset along the z-axis. Let's now look at our toolbar buttons, which are located on the far right-hand side of the toolbar. We'll start by looking at the camera button. The camera button will change the view of the scene to that of the camera view. This view is exactly what the player will see on screen when playing the game. In this view, you can use the same view navigation controls to change the position, rotation, and zoom level of the game camera. The local axis button allows you to view the actual object orientation of the selected asset. Click this button to switch to the local axis of an asset. By default, the axis is set to the world axis, where Y is always up. When the rotation of an asset is changed, its local axis will face different directions. Click the Collision Shape Editor button to see the collision shapes of objects in the scene. When enabled, the Collision Shape Editor can be used to rotate, scale, and change the position of the collision shapes of objects. Keep in mind that collision shapes only appear when objects have physics enabled. Lastly, click the 2D Mode button to change the view and camera of the world to be 2D. Now, let's take a look at the Asset Panel. The Asset Panel is located on the far left side of the World Workspace. Here you will see a list of all assets that are available for adding to our scenes. Let's start by clicking on the Asset Library button. Here you will see that we have both a Shapes tab and a Smart Asset tab. In the Shapes tab, we have a list of different basic shapes that you can use for your game. To add any of these shapes to the Asset Panel, simply double-click one of the shapes. As you can see here, we just added a cone to our Asset Panel. Next, we have our Smart Assets. This is where we have pre-made assets with specific functionalities available for use in your game. If you want to preview the functionality of any of these assets, simply click to select them. To exit the Asset Library and go back to our 3D world, click the Asset Library button once more. Characters are assets that you can make the camera follow in the game and that the player can control. To add a character to the scene, drag an asset from the Objects category and drop it into the Characters category. Here we are adding a cube as a character. Objects are assets used in the game world. The player can control objects, but the game camera cannot follow them. Next, let's take a look at the Asset Editor menu. To open the Asset Editor menu, right-click on an asset or click the three dots right next to it. Here you can edit and organize an asset in the Asset Panel. For example, to make icons larger or smaller, choose one of the four options at the bottom. In this example, we will select Large to make the icons bigger. To color code an asset for better visibility, simply choose one of the colors. In this example, we will make this asset orange, so you will see an orange line right next to it. To duplicate and make a copy of an asset in the Asset Panel, select Duplicate. You can also select the asset and press D on your keyboard. To completely remove the asset from the entire project, click Delete, or simply select the asset, then press Delete on your keyboard. Selecting Export Asset will generate and save a bbdoc file on your computer that you can then use for another project. Let's now take a look at Labels. Labels are text with predefined settings that you can add using the font editor. Labels is what you can use to display text in a game. Lastly, we have Lights. If you need additional light sources in the selected scene, you can add two more types of light, Point Light and Spotlight. To add a light, drag it to the scene editor and position it as desired. To edit an asset and open its node map, right-click and select Edit Nodes or simply double-click the asset. The node map is where you can define an asset's behavior during the game and determine whether or not the player will be able to control the asset. In this example, we will click to expand the Move category and drag in a Move node. In the Options panel to the right, we will change the Move value to negative 10 on the Z-axis. To activate this node, we will drag a connection line from the created output of the start node and connect it to the enabled input of the move node. To preview our game, we will press the preview button in the top right corner and as you can see our cube is now moving forward. We will go over other types of nodes and how to use them in our later videos. For now, to go back to the 3D world, simply click the 3D world text in our navigation bar at the top. The outliner in the 3D world provides a list and hierarchy of the contents in your game world. Each asset can be selected in the Outliner. 
The outliner is organized into two sections. The world section, which consists of the camera and the light sun. The level section includes all of the assets that are specific to our current scene. You can click on an asset to select it, then drag it over another to make it the child of an asset. When the parent asset is moved or rotated, the child asset will move in the exact same way. If you want to hide an asset from the scene without deleting it, click the dot in the visibility column next to that asset. To lock an object and prevent it from being selected, click the dot next to the asset in the lock column. Let's now take a look at our options panel. Whenever an asset is selected in the outliner or in the asset panel, its attributes will be displayed in the panel on the right, which is the options panel. When selecting an asset in a scene, you will see its name along with its position, rotation, and scale values. You can edit these axis values by using the tools in the toolbar or entering a specific number and pressing enter. You can also press tab to jump to the next axis field. The position axis values are the coordinates of the asset's location in the scene. Whenever you move an asset in the scene editor, its position coordinates will either increase or decrease. The rotation axis is the angle in which the assets have been rotated. For example, a Y value of 25 means that the asset has been rotated 25 degrees. The scale axis values indicate the size of the object. A scale of 1 on the Y axis means that the object is 1 unit in height. When selecting an asset from the asset panel, the attributes that appear are global attributes, meaning they will affect the asset in every world and scene that the asset is being used in. The Add Brain Box button on the bottom will provide a list of specific functionality that you can quickly add to your asset. To apply a Brain Box to an asset, simply double click the Brain Box. To exit the Brain Box panel, simply click the X at the top right corner. The Scene Selector is the bar at the very bottom of the World Workspace. It displays the sequence of scenes added to the world. As its name suggests, this bar allows you to select a scene for editing in the Scene Editor. By default, all new worlds have a start scene added to them. To add a new scene, click the Add button on the right. New scenes are added to the end of the sequence from left to right numbered sequentially. You can also duplicate the current scene by selecting the scene and pressing D on your keyboard. To select a different scene, simply left click the scene's icon in the scene selector. To rename a scene, simply select it, then in the options panel next to Name, type a new name. If you would like to delete a scene, simply select it and press Delete on your keyboard. Please note that the start scene cannot be deleted. You can also change the scene order by dragging the scenes left or right to the desired location. If you would like to copy objects from one scene to another and keep their attribute values, select as many objects as you'd like, then press Command or Control C to copy your selection. After that, go to the desired scene, then press Command or Control V to paste them into the new scene. Like we did in the node map, you can preview your entire game by clicking the preview button. However, clicking the preview scene button will allow you to preview only the currently selected scene. Thank you for following along with the 3D World Workspace Overview. Keep an eye out for more tutorials at billbox.com.